If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. The first thing that we can do in this question is actually determine the spring constant. And we can do that by using this information right here. We were told that the spring will be compressed by two centimeters by a force of 270 newtons. Now we know from Hooke's law that the force exerted on the spring is related to the distance by which the spring compresses, delta x, by this equation right here. We can divide this equation by delta x and solve it for the spring constant k. And then we can plug in 270 newtons for the force and for the displacement of the spring, we want to use 0 0.02 meters. We just have to move that decimal place over two places to the left. And then we can pick up our calculators and determine the spring constant. And when we do that, we should get 13,500. And then the unit will be newtons per meter, as we can see from the equation. So this is the value of k. We're going to hold on to that and refer back to it later. Next, to get a better understanding of this problem, we're going to redraw the picture that was given. At the top of the ramp where the block starts, we have marked that point as A. It then slides down the ramp a distance that we have called L0, where it will make contact with the spring at point B. But because of its momentum, it's going to continue down the ramp and compress the spring until it stops and reaches point C. Now in part A, if we read the question carefully, it asks us how far does the block move down the incline from its rest position to the stopping point. Remember the stopping point was point C. So in essence, we are looking for the total distance from where it had started at point A all the way to point C. Basically the distance that we're looking for is what we have marked L0 plus the distance that is marked X0 in the diagram. Now, we'll come back to the triangle, and what we can do is mark the initial height of the block as HA. That would be the height at point A. And we can see that we have ourselves a nice right triangle, which we've gone ahead and highlighted in blue. And we can also see that the sine of that angle that's marked theta would equal the opposite side to that angle, which is what we marked HA, divided by the hypotenuse. Well, that hypotenuse is the entire length that the block will be traveling. And as we noted, that will be L0 plus X0. And for now, we're going to hold on to this equation and also refer back to it later on. OK, now it's time to actually begin solving the question. We were told that the ramp is frictionless. And therefore, we can use the conservation of energy. And so the total energy that's present at A is going to equal the total energy that's present at C. Now at point A, we can write the kinetic energy that might be present there plus the potential energy. And then through the energy conservation principle, we can set that equal to the kinetic energy at point C added to its potential energy. Now the block is released from rest and therefore the kinetic energy at A will be zero. It also momentarily stops when it reaches the bottom of the ramp, which is point C, so the kinetic energy there will also be zero. So we're left with potential energies. Now, the potential energy over at point A is gravitational potential energy because the block is located at some distance off of the incline's horizontal surface down here. And so we can replace this UA with the mass times G times the height at point A. But then the block slides down to the bottom of the incline because it's at the bottom at point C, there will be no gravitational potential energy because it's back at that ground level. However, the spring compresses and therefore there will be spring potential energy, which is equal to one half times the spring constant by the amount that the spring compresses squared. Now we can go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by mg, which is going to allow us to solve for this height ha. And then on the right hand side, we know all these values. We have one half multiplied by k, the spring constant, which we fortunately found earlier in the question. That was 13,500 newtons per meter. The amount by which the spring compresses was stated to be 5.5 centimeters. Let's make sure we convert that into meters. So we'll have 0 0.055 meters. And also don't forget to square it. And then we'll divide by the mass of the block, which is 12 kilograms, times g, which is, of course, 9.8.
And when we work that out, we get 0.174 meters. And that's the value of HA, which is that height that the block had started off of the ground level. Now, remember, we weren't looking for HA. We were looking for this distance L0 plus X0. But we're going to be able to find that now because we have an equation that relates that to HA. So let's take that equation. Let's multiply both sides of it by L0 plus X0. So it cancels out on the right-hand side. And then let's divide both sides by the sine of theta. So we're going to see that the distance that we seek is that height divided by sine of theta. We can now go ahead and just plug in the height that we determined, which was the 0.174 meters. And we'll divide by sine of theta, which was given to us as 30 degrees. And when we work this out, we should get about 0.35 meters. And so this is the correct answer to part A. That's that total distance from point A all the way over to point C. We can next move on to part B, which asks for the speed of the block just as it touches the spring. So it's asking for the speed once the block reaches point B. Let's return to the result that we had just determined. We had said L0 plus X0 was equal to about 0.35 meters. Remember, X0 was the distance by which the spring had compressed, as you can see marked in the diagram here. That distance was that 5.5 centimeters, or 0 0.055 meters. So what we're going to do is actually solve for L0. So we'll subtract X0 from both sides, and then we'll plug in the value of X0. And this is going to allow us to solve for this distance L0 right here, which turns out to be about 0.292 meters. So that's the value of L0, and we're going to take advantage of that number in just a moment. Now let's come back to the diagram, and we're going to draw a line that extends this way right here, and then up to where the block had started. And the reason we're doing that, and let's take out this HA for a moment, is that we can see that the mass, when it slides over to point B, has fallen this distance right here, which we can just call Y, perhaps. We want to find that distance y, because that's later going to help us use the conservation of energy. So once again, we have a right triangle that we've just colored in red. And this angle will also be theta. So we can see that the sine of that angle theta is going to equal the opposite side of y over the hypotenuse of the red triangle, which is that L0. So we can easily solve for y by multiplying both sides by L0. We'll plug in the value that we just determined and then multiply by the sine of 30 degrees. And we end up with 0.146 meters. So keep in mind again that that's the distance that the block falls vertically as it reaches point B. Now let's go ahead and conserve energy. This time we're conserving it from point A to point B. At point A, we will write out the kinetic energy plus any potential energy that's present. And then at point B, the same idea. Notice the spring is relaxed throughout the course of this problem part, for part B, so we won't have to worry about any spring potential energy. The block is still released from rest, so the initial kinetic energy at point A will be zero. We have the potential energy at point A, which is the mass times G times the height at point A. Remember, the height at point A was that height right there, which we had called HA. And then over at point B, the block will be moving, so we're going to have 1 half times the mass times the velocity at point B squared, and then we'll have the gravitational potential energy at point B. And that's going to be the mass times G times the height at point B. Now this can be also a little bit tricky. The height at point B would be this height right there. We can see that that height would be the height that's marked HA minus the height that we had marked Y. That little leftover after we do that subtraction, will be this height right here. And that's how high off the ground the block is at point B. So let's plug in HA minus Y for its height over here. And mass appears in all three terms, so we can divide each term by the mass to cancel it out. And then we can actually just go ahead and plug in the known values. So G is 9.8. HA we determined was 0.174. We do not know the velocity at point B. That's actually what we're looking for, of course. G again, 9.8. We have HA, and then we're going to subtract that distance Y that we had found to be 0.146. So let's pick up our calculators. Let's simplify this right here as well as this. We could then subtract the 0.27 over to the other side. We'll have 
equal to 1 half vb squared. We'll multiply both sides by 2 and then take the square root. And when we do that, we get a speed at point B of approximately 1.7 meters per second. So this is the correct answer to part B of the question.